Welcome back to the Stormcrow Show. I'm Brady. And I'm Josh. And today we are going to be looking at Masters 25. And I know what you're all thinking. How do these guys know what is going to be in this set? And guess what? We don't. But we're going to make some educated guesses and we're going to support it with sound theory. So what we're going to do is we're going to go we're going to take one card from each of the colors and we're going to talk about it and we're going to give you our reasons why this card is going to be in the set. But not only that, like that could be really easy in and of itself. Yep. But we're going to make it a little harder on ourselves by only talking about which cards we think are going to show up in the mythic rare setting. So this will be so if we are 100% correct, this will be the first place where you will know what exactly half of the mythics are from the set. Well, roughly half. Well, it's, roughly half. It'll be yeah. probably about 15. That's the I think that's the rough average that usually shows up in a master set. Uh, yeah, and uh, these are going to be you know educated guesses, as Brady mentioned. We don't actually know. It's not like Wizards of the Coast contacted us with spoilers or anything like that. But, you know, given the fact that Iconic Masters was spoiled so early, and, you know, now that we've seen what Iconic Masters has and other things, we have some good reasons uh, that we could just bring up. Uh, but, yeah, uh, with that, I, I guess I'm starting this time. Or, yep, with this yep. Part, kick right? us off with the white card. All right, so, yeah, we'll start with the color wheel. Oh, yeah, to clarify, when we mean colors, we're also having one colorless and one multicolor. So seven cards will be discussed. So we'll start with Wooberg order, and then we'll cap off with colorless and then multicolor. Right. Yep. Right. So the first one is uh, the white card. That will be. St I'm guessing Stoneforge Mystic. Now, okay. Before you start throwing your computers across the room, hear me out. First of all, a lot of these powerful two drops that were rare have been rare shifted to mythic since their next reprint. Tarmogoyf obviously came before the Mythic uh, concept was around, but uh, a better example might be Snapcaster. That was a rare, and then Modern Masters 3, you know, 2017, had it as a Mythic. The one reason why I think Stoneforge will get reprinted is, A, it hasn't been really reprinted except as, like, one promo. I think it was a Judge promo from a year and a half or two years ago. And uh, it is used in a deck in Legacy, and Legacy is a little more open now since the banning of Top. Uh, the other thing is, is that here's the thing: there's a chance I'm thinking that Stoneforge could be unbanned from Modern because because Wizards has been trying to look for cards that might be unbanned in uh, in Modern, and especially in weaker colors. And blue and white fall into that category. And I'm a little more skeptical of Drace the Mind Sculptor compared to Stoneforge. And also just the fact is some of the threats that Stoneforge put together have been are more addressable thanks to cards like Colligan's Command. So overall, I'm actually thinking Stoneforge would be fairly uh, a safe on ban, and therefore it would be in higher demand, theoretically. So they'd want to maybe reprint it for Masters 25. And it was pretty iconic. Uh, not to use the iconic concept, but, you know, it was pretty impactful in the 25 years of uh, history and magic. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so that's for white. Uh, Brady, on to blue for you. Yeah, mm. so when I was looking at blue cards that possibly defined a format or were very memorable over the tw 25 years of magic, the one that popped into my mind... Ancestral Recall? Well, yes, that one popped into my mind, but unfortunately, that is reserve list. Oh, yeah. And we know that wizards won't break their promises ever, ever. Anyways, okay. so the one that I think is reasonable to reappear as a mythic yeah. is Force of Will. Okay. Which I know they did that in Eternal Masters, and that helped, but, I mean, when you think of a blue card that really has defined a format, it's what keeps the unfair decks fair. True. You know, I mean, there's there's not a lot more to say beyond that other than force of will. Yeah. So. And it needs a, probably another reprint to be perfect. Oh, honest. well, I mean, to be honest, I don't... It needs so many reprints that there's no way it's ever going to catch up with demand. 
I don't That's think true. at this point. So any and all reprints are welcome. Uh, Josh, why don't you talk to us about the black card? So this was kind of in the same vein as Stoneforge, although this has been reprinted. And that, of course, is Dark Confident, another of the so-called... Some people have considered these two drops to be a cycle. They're really not, but Dark Confident, or Bob. Uh, it wasn't reprinted in Modern Masters 2017. It is pretty expensive. It is well-known. <clears throat> I would say it's very well-known, and in that respect, it's a very well-respected card. And it so it's got that, you know, 25 years of magic, what's really kind of like, you know, what's a card you think that's really important besides, like, Force of Will... You might think Dark Confident, actually. It's it's pretty important. Obviously, in modern, it's really heavily used. So from a cost standpoint, even, it's just a good reprint because uh, since it didn't show up. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about it. I feel like it's actually a pretty safe reprint, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. also, to clarify, a lot of these cards on our list are... They are modern legal, right. providing they haven't gotten banned. But the fact is, is that... If you think about the fact that Modern starts with 8th edition forward, yeah. that means that most of the cards that are available nowadays are going to be Modern legal. Like, there's just not as many that Wizards can print due to yeah. the reserve list, yeah. and that are also prior to 8th edition. Right. You know, there's just, percentage-wise, there's just yeah. not as many cards. Yeah, and if there's something to think about, by the way, that's because Modern was really designed to be an eternal format that did not have the reserve list problem. Yep. And that's one reason why Modern... That, that's one of the goals of Modern. It was one of the early goals of Modern. Uh, but yeah, uh, back to you, Brady, for Red? Red, yes. Yep. So this card is not Modern Legal, but again, it saw a reprinting in Eternal Masters yep. at Mythic, mm -hmm. and that is Sneak Attack. Yes. Now, this one is going out a little bit more on a limb here just because... It really is only used in one deck, the yep. so-called sneak and show deck. Yep. But it's it's just a solid solid reprint, and I don't think anybody would complain if it showed up again. No, like nobody's gonna sit there and go, "Well, you just gave us that in Eternal Masters," because if they are doing that, just don't pay attention to that person. Pay attention to the other like ninety nine point nine percent of people who are like, "Oh, good, sneak attack is back." Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, unless you're on the receiving end of it, then then maybe you can complain a little bit. But that's everything what... was fine, and then suddenly Emrakul. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. That's that is the danger. But hey, that's why we play, and that's why we have fun, <laughs> especially because we like powerful cards, especially when we're not on the receiving end of them. Yes, yes. So, Josh, uh, talk to us about the green card. Yeah. Uh, so, the obvious one, of course, would be, like, Tarmogoyf, again, keeping with that same theme. They might do that. I don't know. That card always could use a reprint again, but they haven't missed reprint in Modern Masters, so I could see them not doing that just for that reason. The card that they might do, although this is harder because I don't know if they were going to be aware that this would be necessarily as needing of a reprint, but Vengevine. Vengevine, what was it, like, eight bucks for a while until Hollow One was printed? Yeah. Basically. So all of a sudden, Hollow One's printed, and then we have this Hollow One strategy that shows up in Modern, and suddenly Vengevine jumps from like $8 to like over 20 bucks as soon as this deck becomes a real thing. I don't know if Wizards would have kind of anticipated that or decided to print Vengevine. But, to be fair, Death Shadow was reprinted in Modern Masters 2017, and they didn't plan on printing that because it was a really powerful card. It just happened to be a really powerful card when it came out. Yep. So they may have just done that because it's like, well, we haven't printed Vengevine in a while. We should just do that. You never know, but it's a, it, it, I think it would be at least a reasonable chance for a good card that hasn't shown up in Iconic Masters. One thing I should clarify, probably anything that was printed in Iconic Masters will not be in Masters 25, is our theory. Yeah. At least at the Mythic slot, and probably the Rare slot, but especially the Mythic slot. Yeah. Um, so, that's, uh, that's Wooberg, or Wooberg, or whatever it's pronounced. Wooberg, yep. Yeah, even though it sounded bubble 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 Yeah, bubble yeah, yeah bubble <laughs> <laughs> Um, but, uh, yeah, Brady, what's the colorless card that we're thinking is showing up? Yeah, so the colorless one, I believe, is going to be Karn Liberated, and there's a couple different reasons why I think this might be the case. Okay. Number one, 
is that it did not see a reprint in Modern Masters 3 yep. or Iconic Masters. And on that note, Iconic Masters didn't have any Planeswalkers at all. Right. Which, you know, if it was me, I'd be like, okay, sure, you know, I can get away from Planeswalkers a little bit. Yeah. But they've become the staple card of the game. You know, they're the cards that people talk about and, you know, they've really become kind of a flagship. Right. But the fact is, is Karn Liberated, first off, he was the first colorless planeswalker. Yep. Second of all, the legendary creature of Karn, Karn Silver Golem, is on the reserve list, so they cannot reprint that. Yeah. And he's also just been such a huge part of the storyline way back at least until Tempest. I mean, yeah. I mean, he's been in the story for a long, 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 long time. Yeah. So I, I think that if they wanted to epitomize a character that's been with the story for yeah. the majority of the 25 years, I think Karn Liberated is reasonable. I, I, I agree. And uh, in fact, especially the fact that the creature is a reserve list card, so you have this well-known character, but you can't bring the character as the creature because he's reserveless. So, um, you know, I, 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 I think also just because they didn't do it last time too. So, that, uh, but yeah, no, that makes sense to me. Uh, the last one is uh, um, multicolored, and uh, my guess it's gonna be Nicol Bolas. Oh, good, yeah. good. Excellent. I'm not sure which one, but it's probably gonna be Nicol Bolas. Another major star- star- uh, um, character. Did, uh, do you have any guesses as to which one it's going to be? I don't think it's going to be the most recent one or the Planeswalker deck one. Okay, so, so we can limited. throw out the two yeah. new Planeswalkers. So now it's down to either the Planeswalker or the Legendary Creature. The, old, the original Planeswalker and Legendary. And this is tough. I'm going to probably lean towards the... Planeswalker because as a legendary creature, I he'd have to be power wise, he'd be really weak. Very. So very. as as a mythic, I think he'd be kind of a disappointing mythic mm-hmm. to pull. I mean, I'm not saying that. Well, I think in a master set, you shouldn't have like Comet Storm type cards show up. Yeah. No. They've and ne- if Wizards is listening to us right now. They've. <laughs> yeah, it's not like they've ever done that. <sighs> Yeah, but I mean, I guess they could. But I think it, I think it's pretty obvious that there'd be some real problems with that compared to like even Comet Storm, which at least, or even Channel with Channel Fireball, you know, gives you this instant kill combo theoretically, or Comet Storm, which can theoretically win you the game pretty powerfully. So that's probably their thinking. Boss, the creature doesn't really do that. Um, but again, another major character, and uh, yeah, that's why we're thinking these will probably be the mythics that show up. Uh, you know, feel free to leave uh, comments, of course, below to let us know what you think. See if uh, that seems to make sense. Of course, feel free to argue against it, too. We like uh, good discussions. And, of course, maybe you'll point out some other cards. We're not saying these are all the mythics. Just we think these will be the, uh, you know, these are a portion of the mythics that will show up. Uh, Brady, any other thoughts before we finish up our episode that has still gone on longer than we expected? But that's okay. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Tell your friends if they're nuts about magic or ruby or any and none of those yeah just tell, just tell them to watch it just tell them if just they're watch. nuts then maybe tell them to watch this just watch you know, they're not nuts just have them watch it i mean what could, what's the worst that could happen yeah i mean you could lose a friend but i mean hey <laughs> <laughs> wow all right well with that thank you so much for watching my name is josh and i'm brady and this has been the storm crow show have a great week